to all the friends of Pan Beach Chess. This is International Master Camela Giovanno and we are continuing our endgame series and this time we are talking about uh, imbalanced endgames and uh, we will have a queen versus rook example. So what about this position and uh, what is the technique to win uh, such an endgame? Well the first thing to do is to limit the king to one of the borders of the uh, chessboard and then approach it with our own king as far away as possible. And can you see that black will try to keep his rook next to the king. So the first thing to do in this case would be to pull the rook away from the king. So uh, we can see here that if white, for example, will just have a check, nothing happens you can still check and the king will remain there covered by the rook. Okay, now white has to pay much attention because, for example, if it goes with the queen to attack the rook, now the rook could check the king and then black can even sacrifice the rook and this leading to a stalemate. In order to avoid that from happening, white needs to take away any possibility of a check from black's rook. Therefore, queen h5 would be a safe move. In this way, the rook cannot go to f7 and the king cannot escape if the king moves away. White could simply pin the rook or even check on h8 and then queen to h7 and uh, black will not be able to avoid the checkmate. All right, so after queen to h5, there are two options. Black could try to bring the rook on the seventh rank or on the g file. So let's have a look at just two possibilities. For example, if rook to c7, the way to win is by bringing the queen in the center with a check. And so uh, if the king remains on the last rank, he will lose the rook after queen d8. Check and then queen takes c7 and checkmate uh, subsequently. Okay, so if the king decides to go to h7 instead, now white will have a, another check. Actually, there are two possibilities here for winning. One check would be with queen to d3. Obviously, the king cannot go on h6 because of the checkmate, either on g6 or on h3. So the king will be forced to go to the last rank, and we know what happens in this case. He loses the rook, and then the checkmate will come. Okay, very well. So after queen d3, black loses. Okay, what happens if white will decide to use the corners? It can be done even this way with a check on h1, king to g8, and now queen to g2 check. In this way, uh, if the king goes to f8, it's going to be the checkmate on the last rank. And if the king goes to the h file, let's say to h7, then queen to h2 check will take the rook. And if black will uh, make room for the rook to cover the king after the check on h1, after the check on h2, rook to h7, now white will checkmate on b8. So we saw what is the technique. So first limit the king on the border and then uh, we have to try to make the rook go away from the king and then try to find a sequence of a check um, by which white will uh, check the king and attack the rook otherwise it will just checkmate the king but let's have a look also on uh, rook going on the g5 for example for example rook to g1 uh, on g2 it was not possible because of a check and take the rook directly. So even in this case, queen to d5 would be the good solution. If the king goes to h8, now queen goes to a8, and can you see, if the king goes up, it's gonna be a check on a7, and black will lose the rook on g1. Otherwise, if black will cover the king with the rook, it's gonna be a checkmate on h1. Obviously, if the king goes to f8, it's going to be a checkmate directly, either on d8 on the last rank or on f7. 
Okay, so dear friends, uh, this was the end game that I have prepared uh, for this video and I thank you so much for uh, your attention and I cannot wait to show you other very, very interesting end games. Have a wonderful day.